we're into fuel efficiency of diesel truck engines. We're offering uh, manifolds and turbochargers and the ECM programming. We also make a wiring harness add-on. The main thing that Diesel Freak focuses on is trying to help make the owner-operator more profitable by burning less fuel. While we got the slow traffic, I might as well take the opportunity to get to know you just a little bit, throw a couple questions at you and whatnot. So Rooster, where are you from and what company are you running for? Uh, right from around Scranton, Pennsylvania, and uh, I'm actually the owner of the company. We have uh, 38 trucks, and it's N&L Transportation. 10-4. And how'd you, uh, how'd you get into this situation where you're down here in somewhat sunny South Florida? Well, we were good friends with South Sea Transportation, and uh, we moved a lot of generators with them. Uh, a lot of them from out west, and uh, you know, he called us on Friday. He said that uh, a bunch of generators that had to go now, and uh, gathered up a couple guys, and uh, got right on it. Ten four. So, how many of your guys do you have with you? My truck here. It's the one behind me. You know, we have another uh, another of our good friends in the back there, and uh, Matt in the middle there. He's good friends with Sal. See, he also moves generators with us all the time. Who's in the last truck back there? You got a copy on me? Yeah, yeah Fred. Fred. All right, I'm gonna cruise over here to this uh, right lane shoulder, and I'm gonna let uh, the first three trucks uh, scoot on by. I'll get a shot of you guys cruising by. Leave me a gap where I can get in there. Okay. okay. Might as well tell me what you're running there for a truck too. I'm sure some people want to know that. Um, my name is Fred. I'm up by Scranton. There, friends with Nick or Rooster up in the front. Uh, has to help out, so I'm here helping out. And the 2007 W900. Rooster, if you still got a copy, uh, I was talking with you earlier, and you said that you guys, uh, you guys pretty much got down here to. In a, in a hurry, you know, tell me what that was like. Uh, you know, when Sal calls, it's, you know, you kind of, you kind of stop what you're doing, especially for something like this, you know, where people are in need, and, uh, kind of stop what you're doing, rearrange everything, so we were all, all on other loads, and, uh, got finished up what we were doing, moved some things around, and, uh, hooked up to the generators, and, you know, got our instructions from Sal, and, uh, we pulled out of Carlisle, Pennsylvania about uh, 9.30 last night. Uh, besides stopping for fuel, uh, it's, uh, we didn't stop for nothing else. Stop for fuel and coffee here. We got fuel and that's it, you know? So we've been driving straight through tonight. 
Well, I tell you what, that's uh, that's phenomenal. I'm sure the folks that you're bringing these generators to are gonna gonna appreciate that. Uh, it's a, it's a Sunday afternoon here, so Saturday night around uh, around nine o'clock ish there, you guys uh, you guys took off coming this way, and, you, and here you are uh, Sunday afternoon. Now the thing is, uh, we saw where the the officials waived waived all the hours of service. Uh, hours and rules and all that kind of stuff so that I'm sure that helped you guys out uh, get down the road right oh yeah you're not stopping at the scales and uh, you know not have to stop after so many hours driving you know it took us two days to get out here Who do we got there in that third truck? Hi, my name is Matt. I'm from uh, Long Island, New York. Uh, we got a T800 here with uh, a little C15. Uh, do a lot of work for uh, South Sea Machinery Movers out of Long Island, New York. It's our pleasure to, uh, to help these people in need out in their, uh, in their time of need. Let me know what lane you want to go through. Uh, the sign said uh, take the far left lane, the Sun Pass lane. All the tows are waved. All right, you're a sun pass. If you guys all took that left lane, go ahead and hang out there in the left lane. I'm going to get you on the sunny side there, Tenfo. That is sunny side, Matt. Oh, man, both your sides are sunny. Yeah, we're always sunny over here. And four, go ahead and roll on past me there. Hey, Bob, we wanted to uh, thank you for doing all this, too. And, you know, we, uh... Appreciate everything you're doing here. Hey, well, you know what? People need to see what you guys and, and the rest of the truckers are capable of doing when uh, when there's when the call comes. You know, somebody's got to step in there and get the job done, right? Yeah, absolutely. You definitely got a, a nice setup there, and uh, definitely uh, definitely appreciate it. You got it. I don't think I've talked to the guy in the second truck. Tell me where you're from, and. Uh, what you're running there. All right, my name's Ted, Kingston, Pennsylvania. I work for NNL Transport. Uh, 2007 W900 with the A model hood. Well, you know what, guys? I was always told that the guys up there in the northwest, or I'm sorry, the guys up there in the northeast ran some uh, some pretty nice equipment. And I've not yet uh, had a chance to spend some time up there, but I tell you what, I sure do like looking at you guys. You got some nice looking rides. All right, sir. Most of the guys uh, that we work with, NNL and uh, South Sea Machinery Movers, you know, we all do uh, all the work in house, and and uh, like Nick from NNL's got, you know, multiple trucks that they got, uh, you know, fabricators and, and engine builders in house, and they uh, 
they, they do a lot of work on their own. And the same thing with Sal C. And uh, Sal, once again, put all of this together, you know, in a matter of, uh, you know, an hour. And there's a total of about 45 loads coming down. I'm sure you're probably meeting up with the rest of the guys. Came down in different waves, but yeah, Sal orchestrated all this stuff in, uh, in a pretty short time and, and, and executed it all pretty, uh, pretty quickly. And, and we always get the job done. And that's the same thing like Nick was saying. We all uh, we got a pretty tight knit crew. You know, we all we all work together and and get done whatever we got to get done. Well, you guys are making uh, short work of it. So earlier, there's uh, some other guys coming down south hauling some of those generators, Caterpillar generators. And I'm catching up with another two guys here. Who's there in that first truck? Uh, it's Kenny, Kenny Conroy with Conroy Carriers. You know, a lot of guys, when they watch these videos, they want to know what's going on with the truck and whatnot, and then what's going on in a, in a trucker situation here. So tell me what you're running there and, and what are you up to? Uh, we're pulling generators out of uh, Long Island, New York, and upstate New York, down here to uh, Orlando for the uh, hurricane power outages. Roger that. Now, is that something that you normally do? I, I imagine not, but you know, tell me about your, your normal working situation. Uh, normally, I've got uh, 12, tra uh, excuse me, 12 tractors that go out every day, uh, 30 flatbed trailers. We do uh, local New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania flatbed free. Now, the, some of the other guys' the situations were, were different to where they got a call and they, they went and, uh, and, and hooked up to some generators. Uh, tell me that process. Yeah, we received the call on Thursday night about uh, 7 p.m. looking for trucks to head down here to uh, pull the generators. Uh, I had two trucks available. I was able to move some of my daily work around and uh, decided to come down here with two trucks and help out. And, you know, I feel terrible for these people, you know, with uh, losing power and losing food and losing all sorts of, you know, belongings. Natural disasters are, are never fun. Obviously, there, there's a monetary uh, benefit to, to doing this, but at the same time, it's also humanitarian. You know, people need things, and that's what truckers do. You know, they do things to where uh, they, they move commodities, they provide services, and they, they take care of things for, you know, kind of like in the shadows, you know, where people don't really know it, but you're, you guys are taking care of a lot of things. Absolutely. We, uh, this group of guys that's coming down here now, we're uh, a bunch of guys who like our trucks, you know, we're not millionaires, we just like what we do and try to help out as much as we can. You know, we do a lot of charity stuff up on Long Island and, uh, you know, try to, you know, come down here and do the right thing. 10 for Tell me about some of the other charitable work that you do. If, if, if you can, off the top of your head, I know I'm, I'm kind of throwing a curveball at you, but, you know, people like to know stuff. What, do you, what else do you guys do like that? Oh, we take my tractor and trailer every year. We decorate it for Christmas with uh, big toy boxes on it. And we fill them for Toys for Tots for needy children. And uh, we do a turkey run for homeless people and uh, low-income families that need uh, that don't can't afford a turkey for Thanksgiving. We collect turkeys and food. Well, that's awesome. That that that's really great. And, you know, most people would say, oh, but, you know, you're just a truck driver. Well, you're more than a truck driver. And by doing stuff like that, you're able to, you know, set a nice example, you know, for not, not just set an example, but you're able to show the public that you guys care and you're able to provide, you know, resources that the, the average guy does not have. Absolutely. You know, we all love, you know, we all love what we do out here. You know, there's this group of guys and uh, we wouldn't trade it for the world. We're just happy to get up every day and go trucking we like our trucks and you know trucking and family now mentioning uh, you like your trucks you didn't tell me what you're running there tell me all the, the truck specs that you got there with that uh, Kenworth got a lot of guys they've been waiting to see Kenworth's on big rig videos so we got us one here what are you working with there well, I apologize it's a little dirty from all the rain last night but it's uh, 92 Kenworth W900L it's a four and a quarter cat mechanical 18 speed 290 wheelbase it's an aero one bunk it's a unibuilt hole so it's got the big hole between the cabin sleeper so you can slide the seats back into the sleeper to give you more leg room very nice how long have you been running it for 
this truck I've only been running two months. Uh, before this, I had a Freightliner cab over I used to run every day. And uh, starting to do a little more long distance stuff. So I want something a little more comfortable. Dan for you, that sounds about right. get past that camper go ahead and come uh, right lane one I'll come right lane one we'll get us a two wide shot there ten four go ahead and run it right up next to uh, to Ken there don't be bashful <laughs> Good, hold her right about there. You can uh, drop back, let Mario come left and come around this tractor. Ready, bring it up, Mario. Come back on up with us. Don't lose us now, back there. Nope, catching up there. 10-4. Mario, why are we at it? Go ahead and tell me a little bit more about yourself there and what your, what your normal day-to-day uh, -day operations are like with uh, working for the company. Hi, my name is Mario. I'm from Long Island, New York. I'm leased on to uh, Kenny, the gentleman behind us. Um, work in the tri-state area. Run up and down the expressway every day, and uh, just come down to Florida, stretch our feet out was a pretty nice retreat. Even though we had to ride through a hurricane to get it. Ten four, well, we appreciate you doing that. Yeah, it was all in the, a part of fun.
Uh, tell me what you're running there. Charlie Bowen. I'm from Cuny Beach, New Jersey. Got a 2000 7900L. A 550 cat, 18 speed, 370 rears. 10 4. And uh, when you're not uh, trucking in the Florida with generators, what's your normal uh, modus operandi? Pull a dump bucket around, pull uh, recycled paper and glass around. Charlie, when I got you back here, why don't you go ahead and uh, give me a quick history on uh, what got you into trucking? I grew up around it. My grandfather, uncles, they all drove truck, owner operators. So when I was a little kid, that's all I wanted to do. Roger that. So how long have you been behind the wheel there about? Over 13 years. We'll copy that. I'm sure a lot of people appreciate you uh, hopping down here with, uh, you know, changing your schedule and coming down here bringing those generators. We appreciate you. Uh, did you say 30 years? I said over 13. Oh, okay, copy. I think I got, I think I heard 13 too, I think. Do I sound old? A little bit. <laughs> I'm 30. Is the mic getting turned down enough for you? Because, I mean, I got big power up in this radio. No, you sound perfect, man. See that all you guys buy them big high dollar radios, and I got a gal uh, Cobra 29. Why don't you tell us a little more about it? Uh, it's a black edition. It's got a bunch of LED lights inside. You can change it up. It's got a weather. Uh, Roger Beep, which I'm going to turn on for the interview. Uh, it's real nice. Paid 110 bucks for it out there in uh, Iowa 80 because I run the West Coast. Well, who do we got here in this third truck from the back here, running this uh, white KW? Uh, my name is Joe Galapo from Keyport, New Jersey. All right, well, nice to meet you there, sir. Uh, tell me what you're running, all the good stuff. Uh, your make, model, uh, drivetrain, all, all that kind of stuff. And uh... It's a 05 Kenworth W900L, 550 Cat, 18 speed, uh, 355 rears. 10-4, and when you're not trucking in the Florida pulling generators, what are you normally doing there? I pull a walking floor back home on demo out of uh, North New Jersey to Pennsylvania, various landfills. 10-4, now most folks will say, hey, well, that's a too nice truck to be going into a landfill. Yeah, it gets beat up pretty good, and that's the only bad part about doing it, is it's very hard to keep it clean. Well, how long have you been trucking for, and tell me uh, what brought you into the wonderful world of trucking? I've been 18, and uh, same answer as Charlie back there because we are cousins, so just in the blood. Father, grandfather, cousins, uncles, just been around it all my life. 10 4. Well, we appreciate you bringing, uh, bringing these loads into Florida. We're going to hop up here and talk to uh, the next gentleman in the line here. Copy. So who do we got here in the second truck? Uh, tell me, uh, tell me your name, where you're from, and uh, what you're normally doing when you're not bringing uh, generators to Florida. Yeah, Chris Lordy here, out of Montague, New Jersey. Uh, I'm not pulling these generators, pull a flatbed. Uh, just kind of stay local with it, moving a little bit of everything. Ten four, and how long have you been in the seat for? Uh, owning my own, just over a year. Total of uh, seven years now driving. Tell me how you uh, got into trucking. Nah, same as the other guys there, right in the family. Kind of was in the blood, always went out with my father. Uh, that was my summers as a kid, so that's all, all I ever did as a kid. So I figured that's what I would go out and do as a career. And uh, did you tell me what you're running there? That's uh, 2003 W9L, uh, 18 speed, Cat D15, 550. 355 rears, all loper all the way around. Well, you said you've been running for a year. Uh, have you been running this truck uh, specifically for a year as well? Yes, sir. This is the uh, first truck I went out and bought on my own and been running it since. 
Ten four. It's a good looking truck there. Thank you, sir. Question, Eric, uh, Mr. Lordy, if you're 24 and you've been driving for seven years, so you were driving illegally, is what you're saying? Because you can't leave the state, um, so you're 21. Hey, hey, those things don't need to be on record, okay? okay. Now that it is, thanks. thanks. But, but the state of New Jersey does allow you to start driving at the age of 18, so you might actually be right. It may actually only just be seven years this coming. I was trying to do math in my head when you asked that question, okay? Nobody likes a liar there, Mr. Lordy, okay? So let's keep it clean now. Because the next guy in front of you is going to do a lot of lying. Where he got all his ideas from to do the truck and this, that, and everything else, blah, blah, blah. This is the first white flag last? Wait, you mean he didn't buy it like that? No, nah, normal guys like to say, uh, built, not bought. He's the other way around. He's just drop it off and call me when it's done. It sounds like uh, these guys behind you, they're, uh, uh, I don't want to call them the peanut gallery, but uh, they, they may have some fun with you. So who do we got here in this first truck here? I'm Sal Castiglione, North Belmo, New York, a.k.a. Long Island, New York. 10-4. Now, we were talking on the phone earlier today, and I also got wind of you guys coming down. That's why I decided to come out on the highway and uh, get a peek at what you guys were up to. Uh, tell me uh, tell me what you're up to and uh, the scope of things. We do a lot of trucking for a local cat dealer out in Long Island called H.O. Penn, and they do a lot of disaster relief, storm relief, standby power hospitals, schools, nursing homes, etc. And, uh, we have a real good relationship with them, and they uh, work with a company called Gardner here. Does a uh, national disaster, and they got the phone call. They need a bunch of units brought down here for Hurricane Matthew, and our contacts over there gave us a shout and told us what they need, and we reached out to a bunch of good people that you see behind me, and uh, we put it together. We supplied with a total of 34 units coming out of Connecticut, New York, Boston, all points of, uh, uh, Jesus, Massachusetts. Sorry about the Boston there. Put them all from the Northeast and brought them down here to help you folks out. Sunshine State. Well, we appreciate that. I'm going to hop over in front of you here real quick. Do your thing. Come on over. You been practicing that speech? Yeah, man. I got it written down on the inside of my wrist, bud. Why do you think he was sleeping there? He was, he was writing this down this morning. That's why we, we didn't really wake him up. He just wanted to make sure he was down in front of us. He was writing this down all morning. It, sound, it sounded good? Yeah, it sounded like you rehearsed it. Oh, man. I didn't tell you guys prior to my uh, trucking career, I was a, uh, you know, I worked at Yale University. I was a uh, professor up that way for many years, mixing up all kinds of, you know, chemicals, reading books. I was able to crack, you know, all kinds of, uh, you know, mathematics stuff and stuff like that, you know. Very, uh, very well-rounded here, pal. Oh, man, by your CB interview, them years at Yale, it, it paid off, bud. I appreciate the compliment there, uh, number three. And, uh, you know, you're a good dude, bud, minus what uh, we read in those bathroom stalls about you, pal. Honk, not honk, honk. Sorry about that. <laughs> While well, I'm up here, you guys, uh, you guys are a trip. I love it. Uh, now, Sal, when uh, when you're not running generators around, what are you normally doing? Um, I'm a model, a full-time model. I model for Gap, Abercrombie and Finch. Do a little Gucci down in the uh, you know Europe and stuff like that. Now, is, is with that? Is that with the truck or without the truck? It depends on what they're asking for, you know, sometimes the truck's in the background on the beach scenes and stuff like that. We do a lot, you know, sometimes they want to, you know, a snowboarding scene, you know, we do, you know, we do what they ask, you know. Sometimes I'm on the hood of the truck, you know. Things get, you know, things get a little crazy and stuff, but we do what they ask, you know. 10 sounds like you're a very accommodating guy. That, that's, that's nice. But the truth is, he don't really do much. He sends his daddy out to do all the hard work, and he sits in the shop and washes the truck. 
Uh, you forgot about, I have a dog, and I take him for long walks on the beach, remember? We, didn't we discuss all this earlier? The puzzles that we built at the shop, the checker games, the plastic models we built? I mean, come on, Joe. That's right, dude. Good old dude. Daddy. Daddy, I don't want to go to work today, Daddy. We call him Alarm Dad there, uh, Chris. We call him Alarm Dad. And they, uh, yeah, he's a good dude. <laughs> Turn of horror. Now, a lot of the folks are going to be like, yeah, but I see that truck all over the place hauling different things. So what else do you get yourself into? Uh, we're a specialized carrier. We do uh, do a lot of over-dimensional freight. We do haul a lot of generators. We haul chillers, air conditioners. Um, companies based about 40 miles out of NYC. We do a lot of uh, New York City over-dimensional freight. Uh, we get our hands in machinery moving. We do some rigging in the city. You know, we move excavators, payloaders, pretty much, uh, you know, the slogan is, you call, we haul, we do it. You know, we'll move, uh, you call it, you know, you tell us to come move a garbage can, we'll do whatever you want us to do. Roger that. Now, with the scope of this move, uh, you know, kind of put it into perspective. Uh, you guys were up, up north doing your deal, you get a phone call, and before you know it, you're down here. So kind of walk me through what what happened so people can get a can get an understanding of how you guys put this together and we're down here so quickly. Uh, I was actually down at the cat plant in Newberry, South Carolina, picking a unit up going to uh, the Great Neck, that's out in Long Island, Great Neck University or a school of some sort, of bringing a unit up for them. And the third truck back, Joe Galapo, he gave me a call and he says, hey, are we going to haul any cat generators, you know, with the hurricane coming up and I had a conversation with him and ironically the phone rang within 40 to 30 minutes after that conversation and you know the customer said you know it's you know you're aware of what's going on I said yeah and he says you know you'd be able to give us some support and I said yeah I think we could accommodate you and uh I made approximately four phone calls and with that four phone calls we were able to uh put the show on you see here with a like I said total of 35 trucks So what day of the week was that when you got that phone call in? It's Sunday afternoon now. We got that phone call. We got, you know, they put us on alert and asked us, you know, you know, just kind of threw it out there. You know, they threw it up in the air. And so, you know, that was uh, Thursday. I'm going to probably say, I'm going to probably say probably 2 o'clock in the afternoon. That was brought up. And Thursday night by 11.30, we started putting trucks in order. And we had trucks in Holtzville, New York at 7 a.m. We had 10 trucks there. We had trucks up in Milford, Mass at around 9 in the morning. We had trucks all over the place. Oh, Jesus. We had uh, guys picking the pieces out of Poughkeepsie, New York, 10 o'clock in the morning. You know, we did uh, we did our deal there. We got, uh, we, we, you know, we dispatched the guys and got them underneath these trails and, you know, pulled the trigger and got everyone heading south as soon as we could. You guys got on the road and you just, you know, some of the guys early, some of the guys said that they drove straight through. Uh, the governor, uh, not the governor, but uh, some of the regulations were waived in terms of hours of service. Uh, tell me how that worked out for you guys. Um, we got a we got a pass here. Uh, we don't stop, as you see. We're driving by the scale. We don't have to stop the scales. We don't have to keep a logbook. It's uh, you know, it's pretty much get there as fast as you can get there, and that's what we're doing. We last night we rode across. The, we went through the hurricane last night. Some guys chose different routes from where they picked their units up and came out. Uh, we pretty much stuck with the program. Just you know, put them straight through the wind. You know, we were told to stay off of the coast. We came down 85 here, so we wouldn't get tangled up in the storm coming off of the water and all that. And you know, long and behold, here we are. 20 hours later, sounds like a long way for some of the super truckers out there, but you know, we're doing our thing here. Roger that. Now, we were talking on the phone earlier, and we were making some comparisons uh, when it comes to, to hours of service and. 
and we were talking about how truckers are, you know, right now, you guys are needed. You're needed in such a fashion to where rules are being uh, suspended in order to get what's what's necessary. Uh, and then sometimes uh, when everything's back to normal, the, the old trucker is forgotten about and all these rules come into place and it's, it seems like a thumb is put right back down on top of a trucker again. Uh, so we were talking about how these hours of service, uh, when they're suspended versus when they're on, how you can be an ordinary Joe in a pickup truck or RV or whatever driving across the states. You can do just about anything you want to and nobody said, says anything. We're to everyone's totally appreciative of what you guys are doing now, but what are your thoughts on all, on all that? You know, Chris, it's, you know, I, I haven't been out here as long as a lot of guys. I've been out here since 97 and, you know, to older gentlemen and guys been around, we're green and you can say whatever you want to say, you know, and I, I think it's a bunch of nonsense the way we are treated in the hours of service, like we were talking on the phone. It's, you know, it's, you know, it's okay for a cop to do a double or a fireman to do a triple or a surgeon who's responsible for the life of somebody. And uh, here it is, you know, a guy that's out there just putting food on his table, he's only allowed to work, he's only allowed to drive 11 hours. You know, 14 hour work day, gotta take 10 hours off, gotta sleep for 10 hours. All right, I, I can't sleep for 10 hours, but I'll give it hell to try. You know, but like you says, here it is, you need us, we're here, it's okay now for us to run 20 hours straight. But, you know, I guess it's, uh, I guess use us, you know, take, you know, we. You know, I don't know, it's just like we said on the phone, but you know, it's one of those things. We're so needed and we're so valuable, you know, so valuable, and we're, uh, you know, kind of treated like trash, and I don't, you know, and I'm sure a lot of people say, you know, feel the way I feel. I think we're treated unfairly, you know, I think we're uh, overtaxed, you know, pay for every single thing. $185,000 for a truck, FET tax, $600 for tires. Two dollars plus a gallon for diesel, all kinds of insurance. So you pay all that, and you do all these great things. You pay your taxes, you do your road tax, your income, your if the, you know, it just goes on and on and on. And you do all that, and you pay, you know, you buy your trail of fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars, and up from there. And then here it is. Yeah, you can only work eleven hours a day. You know, all right, no problem. Yeah, and then when you go roll into the scale. Hey, call an entrapment, call what you want, and then you go in there and you meet the uh, man that writes the ticket, and you get your hand, you know, so a bunch of tickets if you're a couple hundred pounds overweight on an axle, or you drew the line long in your log book, you know? But, like you said, here it is a situation where you need us and we're here to help others out, you know? Right, it certainly seems like some of, this, uh, some of these regulations could be reevaluated. To, to really meet the, the needs of, of the guys that are trying to put food on the table. And we're not talking about uh, a guy that has a hundred trucks or a company that has a hundred, you know, a thousand trucks, you know, there's, there's a big difference, you know, uh, between that. Some regulations are necessary and others can be, you know, looked at differently. Now the guys back there uh, behind Sal, you know, what are your thoughts on that? You know, weigh in on that also. I think it's dangerous control on you. Uh, you see a lot of accidents out here. Most of them are involving your, your bigger companies here that are restricted to what they're allowed to run. Uh, I had an incident the other day. And guy was getting ready to leave. I told him he had a I said, yeah, an air leak in your tire here. He came back, took a look at it, and he had a screw in it. He goes, well, he says, my 10 hours are up. He says, it's time for me to go back to trucking. Hopped in his truck and took off the tire leak in air. He says, I'll worry about it on my next break. Uh, I think it just forces these guys to work when they when their bodies aren't ready to work. I mean, I know there's times where I'll get up in the morning, I'll be raring to go. And there's other times I get up and I make it two hours from the house and I pull over and take a quick power nap, hour or two, whatever it may be. And then uh, I get back to trucking again. So it's almost like um, these guys are, these, these regulations make a guy robotic in a sense, you know, where it's like they just go by a clock and, uh, and they do what, what the clock says. Yeah, in a nutshell. Uh, once you hit that start button, you know you got 14 hours of your day. Uh, a lot of these guys, you're paid by the load or paid by the mile, so the wheels aren't turning, you ain't earning, as, as the saying goes. So a lot of guys, like I said, they'll push through snowstorms and stuff where they know it's dangerous, but they don't have a choice, they gotta go. And if I get told to stop driving, like right now, I couldn't lay down and take a nap. I'm just not ready to go to sleep, so I'm still out. I mean, a normal body isn't used to sleeping during the day. 
So now I'm going to sit up in the sleeper berth watching TV or, or playing on the, the Facebook there. So I'll waste that time still up, even though I'm in my, my sleeper berth and I won't get the adequate sleep I need. But according to the e-log there, I should be sleeping. So it's forcing me to stop doing what I'm doing. Right. It, it basically it resets your, your natural your natural body clock. Correct. You got there for a truck. Tell me all the all the good stuff. Uh, you got a uh, 2002 Kenworth W900L. It's got a. Uh, it's powered by a C16 Cat, backed up with an 18-speed transmission. It's got 46,000 pound full locker rears, 370 gear ratio, sitting on low pro 24.5. It's got a 25,000 pound pusher axle. Uh, it's got a 14.6 front end. Dual steering boxes, sits on a 305 wheelbase, double framed. Fontaine, for, uh, it's got a Fontaine 60 inch slide in the fifth wheel, 42 inch flat top sleeper. You know, it's got a, it's pretty much got everything you need, you know, to get the job done. Four. You said something that I, I don't normally hear guys talk about. You said uh, two steering boxes up front. You know, it might be obvious uh, to some. Uh, it's somewhat obvious to me, but tell me the need for two steering boxes. We load the front ends on these trucks down pretty well and, you know, keeps them, you know, you're not overworking the one box, keeps everything cool. We do a lot of steering in and out of the city. We're always in Manhattan. We're always on these back roads and stuff like that. You know, we do uh, over-dimensional freight. So we can't fit under most of the underpasses on the highway, so we're in and out of these tight spots, and you know, we'll jack it around on a corner. You know, it'll take you maybe nine attempts to make one right-hand turn, so you know, the twin steering boxes help you take the load off of that. You know, especially you lift the lift axle up. You know, the axle's rated at 14.6 in the front, all of a sudden you lift the axle, you got, you know, 18, 20,000 pounds on that front end, and you know, it just helps it get along. Steer's real nice, you go down the road, you don't get much bump steer, not a lot of drifting and stuff like that. 10 for you know I never thought about uh, the amount of uh, maneuvering you need to do in, in those uh, areas in the city so you know appreciate you uh, elaborating on that What do you think you're making horsepower wise there? Uh, you know, I don't want to speculate. I would probably say in the mid eights there at the flywheel. Got a marine cam and uh, oversized turbo, oversized injectors in here. Got a real good mechanic, little independent guy by the name of Manny. Tunes us up nice, does a real nice ECM tune for us, and he keeps us on the road. He keeps us smiling going down the highway, you know? I'll tell you what, if you're getting 800 uh, coming out of that thing, I'd have a pretty good smile on my face too when I'm going out the heels there, right? Yeah, 10 on that. You know, the stuff we get into here, you know, we do a lot of over-dimensional, overweight, and it, it makes it a lot easier on you knowing that you're not doing 22 miles an hour up a hill. And again, you know, you got them guys out there that are hauling four or 500,000 pounds. You know, there's nothing's going to propel that up the road, but 
you know, we stay under 200,000 pounds and we can keep pace on the highway and not cause a big traffic jam. And, you know, people got to realize we don't want to be in their way. And, you know, they, we want to get home just like they get home. So, you know, we try to do our best to get out of the way, you know? 10-4. Speaking of weight, what do you think uh, that generator is uh, coming in at weight-wise that you're hooked onto there? This is a two-meg generator, the power of, you know, power of a hospital here. Um, these units, they come in, uh, this unit here weighs, they range between 88,000, 92,000, depending on what it has inside it, you know, if it has a transfer switch, you know, what kind of... Uh, switch gear and stuff like inside that. If they put cable in it, you know, they occasionally put some extra cables in it for the customer to accommodate them in a situation like that. So I'm gonna probably say this is uh, 88. Yeah, it's, it's about an 88,000 here. I'm looking at my load gauge. It ain't, it ain't too awful, you know, I'm able to run with the axle up. 10-4. I'm gonna go ahead and come center and let these uh, people come around on uh, left. Uh, maintain your speed though. 10 on that. the guys that you got with you more than likely you'd want to give them a little shout out a special thanks there for for helping you out here right yeah Chris absolutely uh, man in no particular order I'd like to thank Nick from NNL pulling together a bunch of guys he brought us Danny the farmer and his crazy brother John the farmer you got John from Double Green he brought us a whole itinerary guys um, he's he brought a couple of gentlemen from Green Outlook um, thank you, Danny, from ICC, for supplying us with a bunch of trucks. Kenny Conroy, he brought us a couple of trucks down. You got Crazy Matt from N1. He's an owner-operator of mine, always there, always in a, you know, he's always there to help you out no matter what. You got Chris Murdoch. He's out in uh, somewhere working his way down here. Um, you got the two Keyport kids there. You got Chris Cloudy. Uh, the key port kids, that would be uh, Charlie Bowen and Joe Galapo, Brandon and Mr. B for coming down at the drop of a hat, you know, uh, the driver from SRS. I don't know your name, but I know you're here, man. We appreciate it. David from Izzy again, thank you. You know, you gave us your guys. Uh, Joe McGuire, thank you. You know, and again, guys, if I missed anybody, I'm sorry. But I, and again, I, you know, we really appreciate, you know, the uh, support at the drop of a hat, you know. And again, thank you very much. Besides the guys that brought the stuff down here, you know, as the drivers, you know, we'd like to thank the people over at H.O. Penn, Jim Rogan, Janine Iverone, Mary Gordiello, Amy, John the Mechanic, you know, and all the other mechanics in the yard for getting the stuff prepped and getting it out here to help these folks out in Florida. Uh, thank you guys, you know, and again, Chris, man, we really appreciate what you do for us out here in the industry. You know, you make us look good. You know, you're a real nice guy, nice car, nice setup. Very impressed, bud. Real impressed, man. Thank you. Like, really thank you, Chris. You're welcome. Things like this can't get done without cooperation and teamwork and logistics. And I really wanted to capture something that would allow people to see how quickly some things can get done. And I'm sure in other situations, some things have gotten done even quicker. You know, a lot of folks are going to thank you and, and uh, look forward to uh, knowing that there are some guys that will uh, step up to the plate to get things done when uh, when it's needed. You know, this crew of guys, I consider my personal friends. They're uh, generous gentlemen. You know, like I said, if they have two, you need, you know, you need one, they'll give you both. These are the guys that give you the shirt off your back. They'll, uh, they'll go to war for you, and that's what you need. You know, you need good people. You surround yourself with positive people, you know, and... I'd like to thank my family on my end, you know, we're a small little, you know, little small little trucking rigging company here and, you know, I have the support of a great family, you know, my, my mom, my dad, you know, everyone around me, my brother, you know, and again, you know, all the people we work with locally in the city, I mean, they're just phenomenal people, you know, they, uh, I'm very thankful for the, them, you know, for my family, my friends, I'm thankful for everything, you know.
say it, it was nice meeting up with, with you and the guys that came down uh, along with you. So uh, I hope to see you soon, man, and uh, it was a pleasure getting to know you. Chris, right back at you, man. We were, again, man, I can't thank you enough for what you do to, you know, do for the people in the industry. You know, do you get to show videos of people all across the country here, and you know, you you bring a lot of uh, positiveness to the to the business. So it's, uh, I mean, there's a lot of positiveness around here, but you know, a lot of riffraff and stuff like that. And you show the people the other side of it, you know, and it's nice, man. It's nice to be appreciated, you know. You're welcome, man. Some other guys that come in, uh, come in the town, holding these generators here. Uh, who do I got here on my right? Chris Arrington. Tell me where you're from and what you're running there. I'm from East Windsor and uh, running for SRS National out of Southington, Connecticut, with an 07 P 550 Cat and an 18 speed. Well, she's looking pretty good. And who do we have here on my right? Barry Bean. Carolina. I'm Craig Stein out of Belvedere, New Jersey, driving a 98, 379, beat a 600 cat. Lastly, at the, the front of this pack here, who do we got? You got the Tic Tac driving the infamous trailer queen for Double Green Circle. Walking down the road with a big cam 400 twin turbo, so it's running about 475. 10 4, and where are you from? From the lovely Guilford, Connecticut. 10 4, I was talking with Sal C and some of the other guys that came down here today. How's this ride been uh, treating you? Uh, we had a few hassles today trying to dodge the hurricane, but we're just trying to get uh, get some power units down here to get the good people of the Sunshine State some light. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, you guys have been uh, at it nonstop between the, the different groups of guys that I've talked with today. When you guys got the call, what was it like? What did you have to switch around in order to get uh, get on your way? Uh, once Sal gave us the call and said he needed some help, we, uh, we were all preloaded in various jobs and kind of dropped what we were doing to get back drop trailers to hook onto these and kind of beat feet and get down the road. About how many hours have you guys been at it? You know, kind of paint a picture for a person that uh, uh, may not uh, know what it takes to get down the road. Uh, an emergency situation like this, we just kind of got to go. We uh, we all worked Friday during the day and then ended up coming down to hook onto these trailers in the afternoon and we left out uh, about 7 o'clock out of Connecticut and here we are now.